we go. All right, we are back with Mossy Bus, finally. And as you can see, uh, he's up in the air. And the reason for that is I need to start working a little bit on some metal repair on the step. Uh, the step where the main entry door is has rust. I knew it was a little spongy, but I didn't think I was going to have to cut into it. But I should have known better. So I have a door on order, and it's going to have to go in soon. It's part of the weatherization of this bus, as you guys know. That's one of my major goals. As you can see, it's cold in here. It's not terrible today. The doors are open. It's in the high 30s, but, you know, winter's coming. Um, I have my giant kerosene heater right there, and uh, it works. You know, I put some foam up in this staircase just to keep the hot air from going up. But yeah, this is not an insulated space. And uh, some weatherization needs to happen for the inside of this bus. As you can see, those two windows are not in. Um, the front door is not in and some rear glass is not in. So I wanna be able to have it sealed up so I can use the mini split and uh, continue on with warm weather projects like tiling the shower and that sort of stuff. If any of you are following this, you know that I originally had a goal to get this bus done and lived in for the winter and that did not happen. Um, everything just kind of ground to a halt around uh, the beginning of October. I just had so much going on and then it became winter prep and then I did start a new job. Um, so there's just been what seems to be no time for Mossy Bus. And I got a little discouraged. I broke two pieces of glass. Uh, should have been an hour to put a couple pieces of glass in the back turned out being six hours and they both wound up broken. So then I had to have those remade and uh, I have a different gasket for my curved windows in the back. I'm gonna try that. Uh, it's a little bit smaller gasket. So hopefully that was the problem that the gasket was too tight, hopefully. And the windows are remade, but like I said, let's get on this step project. That's really the next important step. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right, so here we are at the entry and that step is the one that we're talking about. So the steel is rotted in a couple of spots. Now I should mention this is really thick gauge metal and it does have a piece of angle iron underneath, which is the actual support for this step. So this is still, as you guys have seen me go in and out of the bus a million times, this is still stable and functional and I can walk on it. However, I'm not gonna put a door on here with that underneath. So that means it's time to fix it. And we're gonna cut out this section, we're gonna cut out this section. That's a screw. This section right here is no good, uh, but there's enough metal there. Like I said, this is really thick gauge. I might actually just weld that shut. Uh, this section's gonna be replaced. That might just be repaired. This section right here probably needs to be cut out. And you can see this metal stops here, the steel does, and then this aluminum, overlaps and loops under and is riveted into the rest of the bus. I'm not gonna change any of this. This is just gonna be fixed with a bunch of seam sealer and that's still totally functional. This is expected after 70 years um, where steel meets aluminum, there's gonna be some corrosion. Uh, so I gotta clean up some of this here. Again, not gonna get repaired, gonna get filled. That's aluminum that's been rotted and that's not worth repairing, but this is worth repairing because directly below this is exposed to road debris and water and whatever. So it needs to be cleaned up, sealed and repaired. You can see the bus hit something clearly. That might've even been me. I really don't remember. There was a rock where this used to be parked and I could have dragged that. I don't know, but this is actually gonna have to be bent back. which probably won't be that hard. However, it might cause some new stress cracks along this rod bit. We will cross that bridge when we get there. So let's start straightening it out and we'll have to grind off all these screw heads and then we can start our repair. But this is why the bus is up in the air. I needed space. All right, guys, I am not a body man by any standard, but I have the basic understanding of how metal can stress crack and stuff. So I'm gonna try and move this. Yeah. Oh dear. 
So this is going to have to be hammered down right there. That's actually looking pretty good. Good. I didn't crack it, but it's on its way right here. So that's gonna probably need a weld. We'll, we'll clean that up with the grinder and see where we're really at. But this is good metal, so that's gonna be usable. This needs to come down. We only use the best actual bodywork hammers here. Nope. go. I'm gonna need a bigger hammer. We'll get that beat back down. Probably should heat it, but I think just some good harsh wraps with a proper sledgehammer will take care of that. Look at that thing. Ridiculous. Full of powder post beetle. <laughs> we'll give it a shot. Let me show you the result. So you can see I had some primer action here. You see my rust line? So we moved it. We moved it that much, straightened it back out. So I'm pretty happy with that. I gotta straighten this edge again now, which might mean we're gonna need another hit here shortly. Maybe. Yeah. And we're back up. Dang it. I don't know. That that looks like steel right there. And I'm thinking a beetle weld is gonna be a great idea on that. So that's that's going to occur. Yeah. You can see rust likes to appear after you beat on it a little bit. So that crack's going to split. That needs to be ground and welded. That needs to be filled. That probably should be replaced. That is still good enough that I can fill it, I think. And obviously all this needs to be replaced. That is no good. So we'll fix all that. I'll be able to get that good and hot and then burn through that rust right there and then this piece we're being uh conservative not coming down as far as we did on this side so yeah 
These screws, these big flatheads, used to hold down this aluminum panel. Um, like I said, I'm not replacing this. There is about a half an inch of metal, of steel, underneath this aluminum. So we'll probably do like one, two, three, four, just small rivets. Uh, that, along with some seam sealer, maybe some uh, mar glass on top of these, on this, I'm not sure. We'll seal this whole thing up nicely. Uh, I got rid of these two pins. These were the door mounts. There's no way they were ever going to thread out, so I just ground them off. And yeah, so we're time to make these, and we'll get them buzzed in. All right, I'm running out of battery here, but we got two in, which was the only two I originally showed you guys. So that came out pretty good. It's two different pieces of metal. Obviously, this does not need to be pretty. It's all going to be hidden. So we'll get it uh, cleaned up, primed. And this section, which I had hoped to just buzz together, it's too thin. It's just burning up. So we will have to create a new patch for that, but I'm not going to do that today. And then this section, we did good. We were able to save that whole edge right there. And it was a good welding surface. And we fixed about an inch on the top, inch wide by about five or six inches long. This one's 10 inches long by three inches wide. And it's it's sturdy. It's uh, And also that's all straight, or straight enough compared to it being all bent over before. So yeah, I'm gonna give uh, dad his welder back. Put that back in the other shop. We were out of argon in the small tank, so I had to wheel over this monster tank. But anyway, figured out why it's uh why he's using so much argon. This is leaking, and I tightened it, but I, I don't know. It's still I've been grinding, so my ears are shot. But I think it might still be leaking a little bit. You can see it was leaking a lot. That's why he's burning up so much argon. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's a pretty good result didn't take us too long to get the bus aired up and really this this thing doesn't have that bad of air leaks i mean it's been two hours and uh well the brakes have some air leaks because it's at zero <laughs> but the suspension holds its air nicely because uh it's still aired up so we'll get her sorted out and for anybody who doesn't know these old buses the uh the gauge specifically reports the pressure that's left in the brake tank. The gauge, it, it, it's a separate valve. It's a one-way valve that goes into the air suspension. And so the air beams are still healthy and full of air, as you can see by that gap. Well, I got a second wind and finished it. I'm pretty happy with that. There's no more holes. And uh, she's ready for paint. Primer first, then rivets, then marglass. I'm going to do something about that over there. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do yet. Um, I could rivet in a new piece of aluminum, maybe. That hole. But, yeah, it's coming together. Okay, well, I've been chugging along here, and, uh, hey, look, a door. So that's rough fit. It's going to come back out before I do sealant and that sort of stuff around where the wood meets the metal. I have some more painting to do, but we know it fits. Let me tell you a little bit more about it. So it's a mobile home style door, um, which I did simply because of the way that it attaches with this flange. So you screw it in from the outside, and it's actually quite a bit more durable, I think, than a traditional household style door. It's a, a aluminum, might even be steel, I don't know, but it, it's a metal frame and um, super easy to attach and just work with. And, and, you know, I was able to find this one, which is, you can see it's real wood in there. Uh, this is vinyl wrapped, which is actually pretty rare, but they do make them with a real double pane window. I mean, it looks nice. It doesn't have that uh, texture that some mobile home doors, it actually has a wood grain texture. So it looks just like a nice household door. So I'm really happy with it. As far as fitment goes, I wish they made the size I wanted. Really, what I would like is a 34 by 80. 
However, what they have, this is this is called the 34 by 76. So the actual door is 76. I wish they even had a 34 by 78, but they don't. So the point being there is I have a lot of padding to do on top. But again, I, I have to do some painting and stuff. So we'll show you that in a second. But anyway, so this, this space here is going to be leveled. I need to still add sealant um, around, so seam seal around where this aluminum meets the steel, and then I need to add caulking on where the wood meets the seal, where the wood meets the steel, and where the wood meets the door frame. So if we come inside and turn, you can see the big gap up here, which is significant. Again, they don't have the size that I really, really wanted. And I thought, what would be better, having the door down low um, or raising it up, you know, reducing the height of that step. And actually, this works fine. Let me zoom out. You know, when I come down here and I take my first step, I'll put my eye level is right about there. And then when I take my second step, eye level's quite a lot lower than the door. So if the door's open and... Without ducking at all, I step down. I'm way, way lower than the door, and I'm 5'7", so this will work for tall people, but they will have to watch their head. Now, the original metal, if you remember, says watch your head, and that's gonna go back. So I'm painting up this surface here, cleaning it, making it nicer. I need to reinstall and insulate this area. But anyway, this we now know is going to work, so I can start you know, fixing gaps. This isn't attached yet on the top. This only has two screws holding it in, but it's going to work. So household door in the crazy curvy old look bus is going to be successful. So yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna end this one here and next time we'll do a little more finishing up, but that was a major milestone, making sure that that's going to fit and we can make it work. I want to reiterate to everybody, there's nothing square about this opening at all. It is actually wider in its middle point than it is at its top and bottom. It's curved. It has this flange right here, which we were able to sink the door behind. This kind of wind flange. Um, it's There's nothing straight about it. Look at this curve up here. So you can see where the original door closed, they had a straight paint line. So that's kind of what I mirrored, you know. Uh, the door is still under the drip edge, 100%. So when we're sitting still, the drip edge will protect it, which is nice. So yeah, anyway, like always guys, thanks for watching and Mossy Bus is well on its way.